the saw is family. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. What's going on everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo and I'm coming to you with a video that I should have did yesterday. But yesterday I was in a really shitty mood. And today my mood hasn't been very much better but I need to get this video out. And it's good enough to where I'm not totally hating wanting to do this. Um... Yesterday, I just was not in the mood to do a video, guys. I like to be in good mood when I do a video. And yesterday was not the day for that. So anyways, I am doing Leatherface. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Came out in 1990 and was directed by Jeff Burr. It stars Kate Hodge as Michelle, our main character. It stars Viggo Mortensen as one of Leatherface's family members, Tex. And Leatherface himself was played by, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this and I apologize, R.A. Mialoff. I'm probably so fucking that up. Uh, guys, the story of this film is that a young couple are driving across country to return a car to her father, to the girl's father, all the way in Florida. They're coming from California. They're driving across Texas. Out in the middle of nowhere, at the same time, the Texas State Police and people have found a ton of dead, decomposed bodies and pits all over the place. Uh, these are, of course, resulting from the Sawyer clan. Of course, one thing leads to another, and our young couple is caught up in the clutches of Leatherface and his diabolical family. Now, in this film, we have a new cast of characters as the family members. We don't have Drayton. We don't have the Hitchhiker. Uh, we still have Grandpa. Uh, from Part 2, we don't have anybody from Part 2. No Chop Top. Uh, in fact... This movie completely ignores Part 2, as far as I can tell. Now, it does have a small salute to Part 2 in the form of Stretch being in the movie in an uncredited cameo where she plays a TV reporter. A twist on her character from Part 2. Uh, in the beginning, it talks about, right after the events of Part 1, the family members that were not killed were taken into custody, and only one of them lived long enough to make it to trial. Now, with that being said, Leatherface has escaped. And he made his way over to his mommy's house, basically. And in this movie, we get introduced to Anna Sawyer, who is also Leatherface's mother. They also call her Mama. And we get introduced to three new brothers. Tex, also known as Eddie, and he hates that name. Alfredo. And the Tinker, or they call him Tech. And they're all brothers of Leatherface. And uh, what we can gather is that Leatherface, after the events of Part 1, gathered up Grandpa and took him on over here. Now, this does take place quite a few years later. And Leatherface now has a child from basically one of the victims that he had decided to rape. A uh, really creepy little girl who I think does a really good job in this movie. Names her dead baby doll Sally, and her dead baby doll is actually a dead baby. Kind of creepy, huh? into pros and cons guys i only have a couple cons for this film honestly okay this is a movie that i bought a few years ago because i'd never seen it maybe not even a few years ago maybe about a year ago i bought it and i've never seen the movie i decided to watch the movie and right in the middle of the film my copy gets fucked up right and it really pissed me off and i missed like 10 minutes of the film then it picked back up again well, I really wasn't enjoying the film. I really just thought it was kind of blah, whatever. And maybe it's because of that break in the playing that it put me in that mood. I'm not sure. But I haven't watched the film since. And I went back to watch it again today. And this time I had the exact same thing happen with my copy. And it would not play. Period. After that. After the, it broke, it wouldn't play. And I've talked to a few of my buddies who said that their copies all do the same thing in pretty much the same place. So I'm looking to get the Blu-ray. I hear there's a Blu-ray. I'm looking to get that. But luckily enough, it is on Amazon Prime. So I switched over to Amazon Prime to watch it. And I did have to watch the rated R version, not the unrated version, just because they didn't have the unrated version on Prime. So 
I'm sitting there watching the movie, and I found that I really fucking enjoyed it. I thought it was fucking awesome. It's a great fucking movie. I love this movie. I'm not saying that it's technically a great movie, but it's a great movie for me. I had so much fun with this movie. I, Dude, I, I fucking loved it. I can't believe that I passed this movie up, and I can't believe that I didn't like it the first time. A couple things that I don't like, I want to say is the portrayal of Leatherface, but I don't mean the actor's portrayal. He does a decent job. I think he does a really decent job. What I'm saying is I don't like the way they wrote Leatherface. Uh, playing with the speak and spell, uh, like obsessed with the, uh, you know, the, the Walkman, that kind of thing. I thought that was really weird. I did like him at the very beginning of the film, you know, cutting up the face and sewing it together. That was really cool. I thought that was very cool and very creepy and uh, really kind of gory in a way, you know. I really enjoyed that part a lot. And the only other con I have is what the fuck is up with Benny at the end? Now, Benny is a survival nut that comes along to help these two out. You know, these two fucks right here on the screen. And uh, they are a wreck and then he helps them fight off Leatherface and his family. So Leatherface and Benny are in the swamp fighting with each other. And Leatherface pushes Benny into the saw and apparently kills him. So it looks like the next clip you see is just Leatherface standing there in, vict in victory, you know? Well, at the end of the film, and spoilers here, guys, which I just gave a spoiler, but whatever, spoilers. The next morning, it shows Michelle having gotten away, and the truck from the last stop gas station that one of the brothers, Alfredo, owns, which I guess, via the storylines I read about, he inherited from Drayton after Drayton died in the first movie, or, you know, in prison, whatever. This movie totally ignores part two for the, you know, I... I it gives no credence to part two whatsoever. And honestly, I'm really happy about that. The truck pulls up and then she thinks it's Alfredo or Leatherface or one of them. And the door opens and it's Benny. And he doesn't even look all that hurt. I really don't get that. I was like, okay. Didn't he get killed? Wasn't he like sawed in half in the head with a chainsaw? But okay. For the pros. First off, I love that they ignore Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Fucking love that. I hate that movie, and I love that they ignore it. I also love that they went to a dark and gritty tone like they did in the first movie. And in fact, I think this one comes off as even darker. A lot of the first movie takes place during the day, and this one takes place primarily at night. Uh, I love the opening intro. Uh, it keeps the same motif as 1 and 2 with the, uh, you know, the words uh, scrolling up the page. And a narrator reading them, and I really enjoy that. I think it's really cool. I like that a lot, and I'm glad that they kept doing it. Uh, like I said, this one is dark and scary, and it's actually, in my opinion, darker than the first one. And they try to get a lot more scary than they do than the first one. But it also has that insanity that the first one has, that wild insanity. Uh, I love the look of it. I love it in the house, especially in the little girl's room, how there are bones strewed everywhere, how she has her tea table her little table where she plays tea you know with uh heads and shit like that i think it's fucking crazy and i love that i thought it was so good i love the score of this film i love the song at the end leatherface i think it's called or leatherface something i love that song it's kind of a metal song i like it i think it's great uh i really like vigo mortensen i like the acting in this film i thought vigo mortensen did a good job he was crazy not quite as crazy as uh vilmer from part four or quite as crazy as The Hitchhiker. But it's still pretty crazy and it's a lot of fun. Um, Mama? Mama or Anna is kind of a throwaway. And honestly, I'm kind of glad they retconned her in Texas Chainsaw 3D. But we'll get to that when we get to that film. By the way, I am doing these in order of their release, not order of their storyline. So this one kind of made both my pro and my con list. Also, again, the portrayal of Leatherface. I enjoy the actor portrayal of Leatherface. I enjoy R.A. Mialoff's performance of Leatherface. I just didn't like what they did with Leatherface's character in a lot of the movies. I love the gift of that giant badass Saw. The Saw is family, and that's amazing. And I fucking love it. Overall, guys, I gotta give this one a high ranking. I like this movie. I don't, no, I don't do rankings, really, but... If I did, I'd give this one a high ranking. I know it failed in the box office. I know it catches a lot of shit from people. But honestly, when you consider this against Part 2 and how I think of Part 2, 
This was a huge improvement. Anyways, this is a good place, Zenny, to stop this. Say goodbye to Tex. I'm going to try and do a little catch-up over the 4th of July. Also, just real quick before I go, I just reached 700 subs. Thank you very much. I truly, truly appreciate that. There will be more on that to come. I am going to do a contest video and a thank you video. So uh, I just haven't figured out what we're going to do for a contest yet, but I'll get there, okay? Uh, give me a little bit and let me think about it. But anyways, guys, I really do appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking time to comment. And I appreciate all your support. This is Bronco Juggalo saying, peace.